All right. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome. We are starting to see people roll in. Aaron Garantine, Dan Jameson, Jacob Coach, welcome. Marcus Scott, always a pleasure to see you. Terrence Shepard, what's going on? Robert Pike, Richard Lewebo, Le sorry if I'm butchering your name there. Uh, it's awesome to see everyone coming in. Gary Oldham, welcome. Good to see you. Brandon Santiago, Chris Taylor, thank you for spending the time here today. I'm uh, just going to wait another 30 seconds or so, letting people roll in. We had about 130 people sign up for today, which is great. We figured no better time to host a webinar live event than Christmas week. You know, everyone's at home, hanging out, not actually really working. So we thought this would be perfect. Um, so uh, good to see you rolling in. Dave Butcher, Chris Taylor, um, Ian Batchelor, welcome. Thanks again for spending your time here. Peter Darley, of course. Um, so... Just another couple seconds here while I get going. And then um, this is being, yeah, if everyone wants to, to maybe even uh, fire up the chat here, put in where, you are, where you're located. Uh, get, tell us, uh, yeah, just tell us where you're from in the chat. You know, hi, I'm, uh, I'm from Chicago, but I, I'm in Colorado right now. Um, so for there for me, um, we got Coit in Texas and uh, Mike in Chicago land. Um, so put in the chat, tell us where you're from. So it's uh, Tunnel 1, um, and the point of this uh, was, was very much to jump right into it. So we will do that just right now. Um, so today we are going to be talking about drones, uh, drones in the fire service, drones for public safety. Drones very much used to be taboo. Uh, it's something that it was like, this is a toy, and it's something for commercial usage, something for filming a snowboard or while they're going down a hill or uh, something kind of you'd buy at the airport, you know, something that was just kind of like a random little toy. Um, but now that the costs have come down and now that we've actually seen more and more use cases, drones are no longer uh, taboo, but very much something that are being used and adopted on the mainstream, uh, widely being used for aspects like search and rescue, structural fires, technical rescue, thermal imaging, things like that. And we today wanted to break down some of the different nuances and challenges that exist with adopting drone programs, but particularly looking at how do you use this new hardware? How do you use this new software to offer and create new actionable insights for first responders? So that's one of the biggest things is that all this new technology for first responders is great, but if it doesn't actually make the first responder better, faster, safer, smarter, then it's really just a waste of time. Um, so without further ado, quick intro from me. My name is Kevin Sofin. I am a full-time employee of WS Darling Company, business development manager of our innovation technology division. And then we've also started a community called smartfirefighting.com to help raise awareness around innovation and technology in the first responder space. Um, I co-founded that with uh, fellow Mike Mastorino here. And um, we have partnered closely with DroneSense, who is one of the leading drone software streaming technologies that we're going to learn and see about today. Um, and then the agenda, quick little finish intros here, and then we're going to jump right into it and show you technology real time. Um, so without further ado, uh, Mike, quick intro yourself and Coit, and then maybe kind of give us a quick run through in the agenda, and then let's jump right into it. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin, for uh, the great intro and everybody for joining us today. Uh, my name is Mike Massarino. I'm the director of sales over here at DroneSense. Uh, we are beyond excited to show you just some of the capabilities of our software. Uh, so we're an equipment agnostic software platform really built and designed for public safety. Uh, what that means is any really hardware that your programs operate in, we're going to be able to ingest and report on that data, provide live streams to the key stakeholders, uh, and, and a host of other features. Um, so I'm going to hand the floor over to Coit Kessler, a uh, teammate of mine over at DroneSense, and he's going to kind of take the wheel from here. Thanks, guys. appreciate that. Mike check, am I, am I coming across? We hear, hear you great, Coit. All right. Uh, man, I was just looking through the chat. This is awesome. Man, we've got UK, Pakistan, so, and through CONUS. Man, we've got folks from all over the, all over the, the beauty, the beauty of the internet. There is this is no... the, the internets. The internets are 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 working great right now. Uh, welcome everybody, and man, again, it's really glad. If you guys just keep keep dropping those in there, this is uh, this is pretty motivating. Seeing where everybody's where everybody's and, from. And Koi, one thing I'll ask too for everyone uh, in the audience as we get into this: be selfish, ask questions. Uh, and Please. so we want to be able to answer this. So Koi, before you can get going, could you give us a, who, who are you and yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Kevin. So uh, my name is Koi Kessler and up until 
two days ago, I was employed by the Austin Fire Department for 21 and a half years. And uh, so recently retired uh, from Austin Fire. And uh, this is uh, the last eight years of, of my life has been spent losing my hair. That is uh, something that has been a, uh, a, a, a uh, this has been a, something I've been very passionate about is trying to get uh, robotics and unmanned systems into public safety. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, uh, Kevin, I hadn't heard you say this before, but when you said faster, safer, more efficient, like when you, you, you said those words, it just, it made me smile, man, because that's really what this is all about. Um, we have been working on this uh, relentlessly as a community, as a team uh, for, for a very long time. The Austin Fire Department is uh, just one of many organizations here in the state of Texas that are using these things um, very, very effectively and efficiently. Our state uh, at a state level is, is very proactive. Uh, we're, we're literally flying uh, it's thousands and thousands of missions a, a month, um, which is great. And we're using the software to make that happen. So a um, little bit about, a little more about myself. I was a state coordinator for UAS for Hurricane Harvey. Uh, so that means I'm the guy that one of the guys they call for the emergency operations uh, air operations center, and I go in and I help uh, coordinate man and unmanned systems together. And we know we can't do that unless we're talking or we're communicating with one another. So that's where this demo and the software we're using is going to make a lot of sense. It's how to get everybody on the same team, figure out who's on the team because that's number one, and then once you figure out who's on the team, is how you guys are going to play together, and that's only done through communications, open communications, and then, I mean, actually training. So um, I'm really excited about having this opportunity. Uh, Darley, thank you for, for, for bringing this in. Hey, if I can, it, it's, it's, it's great. Like I say, to see the chat is, is fantastic. Um, so uh, I'm going to dig in on the, in, into this, this app. I'm just kind of going to just jump right in. Just talk full, about full send, just jump right in. <laughs> full, Listen, if you guys are using gray, DJI, Anafi Parrot, if you're using orange, Autel, it doesn't matter. The, the software that we, that the software that's provided by the, the drone manufacturers are used by DroneSense. So when you are out operating, so let's say you guys are out at the, the next big hurricane, you're at the tornado, you're at the fire, you're at the hazardous material event, you're at the big public event, doesn't matter what you're using, the software that's being provided by the, the these by the, the these companies that DroneSense has ingested, it the the experience is the same. So that's going to help you out a lot. And I'm going to kind of show you just what that means, just real briefly, um, by sharing my screen. And it will this will probably make a little more sense here. So let me get to this and. Let's see here. There you go. We see it. There. All right. You guys copying my backyard? Yes. All, All right. right. So I'm just going to gimbal up and down. You guys can see. Yeah, this is not can. This is real time. Uh, everybody on call. This is what this is what the user interface looks like. So whenever, it, like I say, it doesn't matter what color aircraft you're flying. It doesn't matter if if drone sense is supporting the supporting it. When you come onto the team, when you're part of this, you're flying the same the same user interface, which means those native screens that you normally have with DJI or Autel or Nafi, they all look the same with drone sense. And that's really important, as you know, if you're tired, if you've had a, a long, long shift, if you guys are on a very stressful situation and you're trying to just make sense of everything, you need this to be simple. We say as simple as an ax, right? It's gotta be, you gotta be able to just get into this and be able to operate together. And this is what the screen looks like. So it, it has, as you can see, the screen has a lot of the similarities of your native apps. Where it does look at it a little bit differently, and this has actually been customized for um, for first responders, is uh, we have some features in here that we're going to demonstrate here in, in just a few moments that um, really speak to collaboration and deconfliction and airspace separation and safety. Uh, you're going to hear me say this a few times during this presentation. You are a public safety aviation program. It this quite, is not a quite really joke. quick. If uh, your screen, I think, moved a little bit. I'm not sure, like, if you're able to like pull it over a tiny bit. Um, yeah, and maybe it's just uh, it, it. It's okay, actually. Oh wait, 
you know, I'm looking at it there. There you go. You're good. Keep going. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, so you're going to hear me mention this. This is not a drone project. If you guys, if there's anybody on this call that's working on a drone project, move from that and look at public safety aviation. This is a public safety aviation program. And with that comes safety. It comes interoperability. It comes collaboration. There's, there's policy, there's procedure, there's training, and there's the ability to be able to do things that, that you, you wouldn't need to do if you're just shooting regular videos. Um, so if, if you're looking at this screen and you're looking at the horizontal um, or uh, artificial horizon here, this actually has cardinal directions. You're not gonna find that in a native app because if you're working with ground crews or you're working with manned aircraft, cardinal directions are very important. An attitude indicator to know what your aircraft's doing is very important. We're gonna demonstrate here shortly uh, what these features are. And these are very, very important when it comes to operating uh, the systems. These are our, our intelligent flight planning and it goes a lot deeper than what you would normally see in a, um, in, in a standard uh, user interface with a, uh, uh, with, a, with a traditional system, um, off the shelf system. This allows us to be able to, to actually interoperate. We're gonna show you what these these feature layers look like here in, in a few moments. But this intelligent flight planning allows us to do work together and it allows us to work safely. The top part of our bar uh, dashboard on the top, they say, hey, this looks very familiar to me. It's just, this is my, my data connection. This is my connection to my drone. But hey, this is a checklist. Why do I have a checklist? This is a public safety aviation program. So we actually go through and we document everything that you do as a pilot. And this is, very, very important when we're speaking to aviation. The checklist would not prevent you from taking off, but it certainly is going to record if you have had a bad day and that aircraft or your pilot wasn't uh, doing their proper checkout. So when you're reporting back to regulatory organizations, checklist, safety number one, this is something that, that we, we pride ourselves in. So um, you can see that we have a few other features in here. These are going to be uh, like, I'm just going to use DJI as an example. The um, the uh, uh, settings that we have within uh, each of the systems that are built in are located within our software as well. So you don't have to go into the, the native app to be able to, let's do, say, do a compass calibration. That is all here. Uh, you don't have to go into uh, the native app to be able to adjust your camera settings. That is all here. You don't have to go into the native app to do playbacks. So it is a, this, this is actually, like I say, this has been created for first responders, for emergency responders, by emergency responders. The only reason this looks the way it looks, the only reason that you can come down and actually cache a map. So for us, we get hit with, with disasters all the time in Texas. The only reason that we have the ability to actually cache a map is because we know that caching maps when you're in a data denied area is extremely valuable for emergency response. So again, created by emergency responders for emergency response. Hey, hey quite one thing, could we get the, uh, the magic link and could we make sure we get that um, show kind of how the whole idea of sending out the QR code and how that Absolutely. works? Absolutely. So we're going to move out, out from here and we're going to, I'm going to share my next screen. Are you, uh, are, Kevin, are you seeing my, uh, yep. See my the screen, screen here. And perfect. Uh, perfect. So guys, this, what this is going to look like, or what this should be to you, this is, you just saw the pilot app. That's how the pilot actually operates. But what it, what, what we take from the camera lens and where we send it and who we send it to is incredibly important, as you, you all know. So DroneSense allows us, it enables us the ability to share. Uh, I would like everybody, I'm going to give you guys a, a 10 count here, and I would like everybody to uh, take a picture of that QR code. We're gonna count ten. Tell nine. me quick, why why take a picture? What what's happening here? And yeah, we'll, thanks, I'll, I'll be I'll be suddenly counting in head. So let's give, give them an thank extra you. couple seconds. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a few extra seconds here. Uh, by taking, you have a couple ways of sharing this information. Um, one is by taking a picture of this QR code. Um, so what's going to end up happening is you're going to take a picture of this QR code and you're going to be able to see all the drone feeds that we have up right now. So you're thinking about emergency operations and how important it is to be able to um, share information with, uh, gather the right information and give it to the right people to make good decisions. 
this is a, a, a fantastic tool that allows us to do that. So literally through the taking of a picture of a QR code, you are about to see drone feeds from different parts of the United States. So Koi, uh, I see one, two, three, four, five drone feeds in there. That's like, that's, explain that to me. What the heck? Yeah. So I, I, first, I, I, I'd like to, to challenge the community out there and hear who else is able to do this. Um, we're very proud of this feature because it, it enables us to be able to work collaboratively again. Uh, so as an instant commander, if, if it is somebody that is trying to make good decisions, that uh, you, you got to have actual information. This is the information that we're gathering from the drone feed, but we're not, we're not saturating the incident commander with a, lot of extra in, with a lot of extra details. We're just providing the, the sole focus of that camera feed to the, the, the uh, person that has taken a picture of this QR code. This QR can, code can be shared amongst uh, the emergency operations center. The, 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 if you've got a, a, a group of responders that are on the ground that need to quickly see what's going on, you guys can share these, this QR code and it will open up exactly what you're seeing now, which is the, the live feeds to all the drones. We have a, 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 an additional way of, of sharing and this goes more into internal operations. So let's say if you are, um, you need your executive team, your command staff to be able to take information in as real time uh, action is, is taking place. So let's say drone is taking off. We have an explosion. We have a person that's lost in the woods. We have some sort of emergency operation. We have this set up currently either with a drone takeoff or as the drone, drone begins to broadcast that feed that you just saw with your QR code would actually be emailed to you. It would be, or text message to you. So in real time, you'd be notified, hey, listen, my people are out operating. I need to pay attention. Real time, I'm on top of a roof and I have to keep eyes on a point of interest. Now, real time, this is gonna pop up on my, on my phone, either through email or text notification, and I'll have a way to be able to dig in and see what is actually uh, happening at the other end of that drone camera. Right, so, uh, Coy, really quick, I want to challenge if everyone uh, has scanned the QR code, uh, that's great. If we need to share it again and pull it up, we can do that. Um, but, Coy, I want to challenge you and, and challenge everyone to kind of start thinking about how this can be used to enhance drone operations and drone usage from where they're at today. And, and I think um, now I know we've got some. And people in the field here, um, especially I know, shout out to, to Sean, Nick, and Moomin, and, and Kelvin, other people on the team supporting this. So um, I'd love to let's let's get that yeah, let's, let's get the birds in, in the sky. Yeah, let's and let's let's show how everybody how this works. So uh, if this, I'm going to drop back one, we're using a drone sense demo. If it's green, that means we're hot, we're on. I'm going to go to drones and devices, and we're going to see what is on here. Uh, right now, we have a number of drones that are are listed on. So if you want to see where those drones are operating, all I have to do is turn the eyeball because I want to see where they're at. And you can see we have drones, uh, we have cell phones, we have different, different people that have different devices on. And I didn't mention that earlier, but if you're using a smart device, that smart device, your tablet, your cell phone, that can be used to also help uh, manage the scene and track your location. So if you're running canines, if it is easy enough to slide your cell phone into a canine harness and be able to see where the dog's running in addition to where the aircraft is going. So all I did was click on the eyeball to see where everybody was at. And now I'm gonna click on the camera feed and you are going to see what you got out of the QR code. So the QR code is actually showing you the uh, different feeds that we have up. So you're looking at the bottom of the screen currently that is going to be BrainBridge. Uh, Washington. We have Calvin, Kelvin Rowlett there. You've got uh, Washington. You've got these two center screens are going to be uh, backyard in Texas. And now we have the top two screens are going to be uh, uh, Illinois. And what I'd like you to focus on next is our map layer that is going to show you where everybody's at and what they're doing. So um, our homies from, from Darley, and uh, Mike Mosserino have created some feature layers in the uh, uh, in their backyard, literally, and they have uh, put in some some layers of points of interest. And so 
these are these are areas in which you would want to focus on uh, during a scene. So this example here, we have some power lines that were were listed. So in this is Mike Mosserino's uh, uh, neighborhood. He has high transmission power lines. So he's denoted that by dropping a um, oh he's actually this is a railway. I'm sorry, I thought these were power lines. This is a railway that he has listed. He has an antenna, high antenna tower. He has simulated that we have a victim on the ground by dropping uh, markers that now our drone operators or our ground crews can go see and investigate. So as they're going out, uh, Sean right now is over the top of a biohazard uh, icon as and, Sean. And Coy, just so Sean, we see Sean standing there flying from, from Mike's phone. But so then is that Sean's camera that we're seeing in the, in the top right corner there? Thank you, man. It really, it, it is. It is absolutely it. And um, by being able to um, see now full screen, what, what Sean is seeing is is very valuable to and us. And this is real time. This is not a recording. This is, this is not a recording. I just pinned the uh, video over the top of Sean's uh, equipment. So now we can actually see, hey, Sean, this is what Sean's looking at. He's got his camera angle, his gimbal uh, where his camera is pointed is the green cone. You can look at the AGL and MSL. So any of our manned aviators out there understand the value of MSL and working together with manned aircraft or teaming with manned and unmanned. Having that AGL perspective so we know where everybody's at and what altitude they're operating at allows us, again, I'm going to go back to public safety aviation. This allows us to work in a safe work environment. But to your point, Kevin, it's safer, faster, more efficient. So Sean's going through and he's uh, toggling on uh, the different screens on his. Uh, uh, Could you make his uh, screen full screen again? Yeah, let me see if I can. And, and even for there's up. some people on this webinar too that are still very new to drone, like drones. Like the, a lot of ways I look at drones is, is the delivery mechanism for the camera or the sensor. Um, and so like talking, just give me a quick little like one-on-one on cameras and infrared cameras with Sean. Like what are they and why are they important? So you're going to have, you have, we call it RGB. It's just red, blue, green. It's it's an electrical optical camera. It is what you would see out of your cell phone. It's what you see out of the camera. It's what we're looking at right now with Sean. So he's just looking out through his camera lens and we're seeing colors, right? We're seeing the natural, the natural visibility of the, um, of his camera lens. He's just flipped over to thermal. And now we have, uh, in, it's great because Illinois is a little cool right now, so everything pops. Anything that's warm is popping out. So now we can make out the heat signatures very easily. I mean, look at the detail of of the different the the, the aircraft right now. What what is gathering? Bodies of water. Bodies of water are cold. Look at the towers that he has in the background. Um, his altitude again. I'm going to go back to minimizing his screen. This is at 84 feet uh, he's flying at, and he's still making out people without any, any issues using this particular palette. So using thermal imaging, it allows you to go through different palettes, which may be important. We found that flying in bo over bodies of water, certain palettes or color coordinations, this is a rainbow palette that you're looking on the left-hand side, is actually really great for, for looking for victims in the water, where going out and looking for, um, individuals that may be in the pressure line. It may be just black and white, hot and cold. So um, this individual is really popping out. The bicycle rider that's coming out is really popping. And this is allowing, again, real-time information to be streamed along with all those other camera feeds that you're seeing back to the incident commander. And it is, it is real time. This is not, um, <laughs> this is, this, this is a, 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 as good as it gets. Uh, I'm, I'm Coy, talk me through, uh, okay, we knew drones could fly. We know there's infrared cameras. That's all great. Uh, and maybe go back to the other screen about like, why, what is the value of bringing these pieces together? Why is it unique? And what, like, as an incident commander that is thinking about starting a program and, and has, I don't know, a 500 square miles of area to cover, um, like, what is the value of having multiple streams and knowing these different locations of where the where the drones and, and people flying the drones are like give me some just high level context of why is that significant and what does that allow you to do than just being one guy with the drone flying it in a field yeah so great question one guy in a drone flying in the field that's a project 
that's some, that's that's somebody that is uh, if you're working behind a program, if you have a program that's built behind you, then then you have um, you have limited resources that you're operating with. If you're running in as a program uh, in in this situation where you have multiple resources coordinating with one another, the same way, the same way we do every day uh, for emergency response, it is us operating together safely and in a coordinated response. So on the ground, if, if I was on the ground in the backyard here with Sean uh, and Mike, I would have a radio on me and I would be running around and we would be communicating off of our, our cell phones on where we're at on, our, on, in, in a, on, on a map. We'd be coordinating what our, our uh, targets are and what it is that we need to, to see and do. Today, we can actually do all that, not only on the ground, but from above. So we're taking, all of our, we're taking all of our resources and we're putting it together. And again, safer, faster, more efficient. This is allowing us to operate at and, a, a much higher speed. And give me a little context too about, let's say I'm a... I'm a fire chief in the middle of Nebraska, and I dropped adopt this kind of program. Um, you showed me the QR code and the link, um, and let's say it's a, let's say it's even a volunteer fire department, and they have limited resources. But all of a sudden, a incident happens. Drone goes up in the sky. I am not at the scene. I'm not at the fire station, um, but I have my phone that's connected to Wi-Fi or LTE. Like, what happens, and then what's like the decision process making process that you can start to think about with access to this new information? Let me give you a, a for real example. Um, this last week we had two uh, two home runs that uh, came out from law enforcement. Uh, one of which was a uh, an individual that was taken into custody. He was he ended up being safe, uh, but his intent was uh, was was to to hurt himself by putting himself between he and some law enforcement uh, officers. It became a SWAT standoff is where I'm going with this. The, the drones went up because the drones were on patrol. The drones went up before uh, SWAT was ever notified. The notifications went to the SWAT commander and to the command staff before dispatch was ever able to, to call out the SWAT team. So real time, Law enforcement officer pulls drone out. The individual says, "Hey, I am going to, uh, I am going to hurt myself, and uh, and I'm going to do this by uh, by through working uh, with and against uh, law enforcement officials." And drone goes up. We the officer is in a safe place to stand off. That video feed immediately pings the SWAT team. It immediately pings the command staff. Now, the SWAT is actually got eyes on from home. All the SWAT members have got eyes on at home of what they're about to go into as they're getting kitted up and as they're about ready to go out the door. Dispatch then hits the whole, the, the, the command saying, hey, listen, we have a SWAT call. It's already, it's already been, like we've already got that into play. So if you're thinking about how important this is to be able to, to share that information real time, I, we have uh, infrastructure that is really important to monitor. If you've got a fire, if you've got an explosion at a refinery, at a critical infrastructure, and you need to get that information back to the emergency response team, if you need to get it back over to the, the CEO or the, the decision makers, real time, as soon as that camera turns on by, by the operator that's using it, you immediately have situational awareness that you can begin going down your algorithm and, and responding. Uh, Sean, right now, this is kind of interesting. Sean's over an area that's actually um, been highlighted in blue. This could be a, a crime scene. This could be an area that is was affected by fire. Um, what Sean can do very easily with these flight and this intelligent flight planning that I showed you earlier is he could map a grid and fly that grid, take photos of that entire area that we have we have set aside for Sean. We, we actually designated that for Sean and said, hey man, that's a simulated uh, crime scene. So he can go over and fly that, map it, take those pictures, drop it into an engine like PIX4D, drone deploy, and be able to produce a high-res map that then can be used for, for greater information, right? And that can then go into plans and operations. So um, 
he has the ability. I just saw a hazmat uh, marker just get dropped. Um, he is able to um, now not only gather information real time, but be able to gather and process information that may be used for pre-planning, for an after action review. We use this a lot, Kevin, for our large music festivals here in the central Texas region in Austin. We can actually go out and map an area before the, the big venue happens, before the, the event takes place. And we know where all the emergency egresses and entrances and egresses are gonna be, ingress and egress. So um, again, this just really allows us a lot of opportunity to be able to, um, to, to operationally uh, do our jobs. Uh, if I can go in briefly, cause I know we're gonna need some question and answer time. Um, if I can go in a little bit into our, um, our admin section, are you okay with that? Or would you like, do you have any more questions on the actual? No, keep, the, uh, if I keep going. Um, and I encourage everyone, uh, use the chat or the Q and a for, uh, to ask questions again, as you know, with Coit's experience, as well as Mike's drone experience, um, ask away, be selfish. It could be anything about drone, hardware, software operations, anything public safety. Um, so we got a couple in there, but quite keep, go, keep going with your direction and then we'll start okay. getting to more Q and A in a little bit. So you, you asked, Hey, difference between one person flying out in the field, Kevin and multiples. Uh, and I said, it's project versus program. Anybody that's out there that's using this, and you guys look up on the screen, uh, Sean has just hit low battery. So it's actually showing us, Hey, low battery indicator need to return back to home real time information for Sean. So I was bringing his aircraft back home and uh, he can go for a battery battery change. Uh, and you're also looking at where Sean has flown with all the tracking uh, back there. So that's actually some really good real time uh, information as well. Um, on my left hand side of my screen, this is the admin side. Now, I, listen, I know that this is not the exciting portion for uh, for most of our our probably most of our attendees. No, but this is this is nitty gritty. And I want you to continue to speak to that from a a tentative firefighter, fire chief, fire captain, or police, and anyone in public safety about the, nut, the nuts and bolts of how you would take this and turn it into a program that is going to be bringing long-term value. Um, so speak to speak to that, please. If you're if you're if you're going to be doing this, guys, there's there, and this is purpose built. Three components. One is the pilot, which is going to be the majority of your team. They're going to be able to use. They're going to be able to do just what Sean did. Is Quick, quick, they'll gather information and send that back. You're going to need a way to get that information to the decision makers. But on the back side of this, right, the, the actual, I said public safety aviation program, public safety aviation program, you have to have documentation. We're working in the national airspace. And I, I see people from around the world here. I, I, I'm calling our national airspace, but we have, we have airspace throughout our world that is specific to the authority having jurisdiction. So for the United States, our national airspace, in order to operate in the national airspace, we have to do certain things and we have to do them the right way. Uh, and it starts with documentation. It starts with policy and procedure and training. All the stuff that, I mean, none of the stuff that's really exciting, but it is the backbone of our, of our, our, our programs. Uh, within DroneSense, we make that a lot easier by uh, keeping you from having to do what you don't want to do. And that is uh, record everything in Excel by taking uh, flight, uh, flight logs, by, by actually going in and manually having to enter all of your flights. Everything we have is recorded here. So I'm going to just kind of jump, jump. Actually, I'm going to move over here real quick. I know this drives everybody crazy when I go to a... Uh, to this, this, this front calendar, but I'm gonna pick on myself purposely. This is kind of our, this is a, a dashboard shows our scoreboard here on the top for drone sense. I'm gonna just pick on myself and you're gonna see as soon as I picked on a flight that I, that I flew, I can go in and I can very quickly look at the details. I can look to see where I was at, what I was doing. If you have somebody that's asking you, hey, I, I knew you were flying in a certain area. Uh, I, I think maybe you, you were spying over my, my backyard, right? Because we've all heard those horror stories. You can actually come in and very easily go back to the replay engine and see exactly where your aircraft was at and what you were doing at all times. So 
very important as a program manager to be able to uh, be able to track that as a system of record. I, I had 35 people underneath me and I needed to know what my buyers, my teammates were doing. Hey, Coy, that going up, go up a little bit. So the view and replay export fly pass, so the view replay, is that the entire video that was, that was captured? That's all the telemetry, Kevin. So we do not re- purposely, we do not record or retain your video. That's on you. And that's for security purposes. And actually so that, that ties video. into a question from Kelly Cerna, uh, or excuse me, uh, Chris Taylor uh, around data security and the, how does data, does DroneSense store data? Maybe t- talk about what types of data does DroneSense store and what type of data and information is on the actual drone operator? So we will record everything but your your videos without your, your videos and your photos. We will not record your videos and photos. That is not something that for security purposes, this is on you for data retention. Uh, we work in the GovCloud. Uh, and so when we are recording uh, all this information that you're seeing here, so the telemetry from your aircraft, the weather reports, the checklist, I mean, anytime your drone gets turned on, you are seeing exactly how many flights that aircraft has. I mean, this is, this is literally, I mean, as I turned on my aircraft today, it tallied up another flight for my drone here. And that is all being recorded uh, within the cloud. And this is your information. This is your information to be able to go in and uh, create notums, uh, notice to airmen for the FAA. This is your information. This is your ability to go in and track your pilot. So if you're trying to track a, a flight team, uh, I'm going to pick on my, my partner in crime, Alex Armstrong. He's another customer support. Um, I need to know that Alex's uh, FAA uh, Part 107 is up to date. And by clicking on Alex's uh, documentation here, I can actually go in and see that Alex is up to date. And he will, in two years, because that's when our renewal comes up, you're automatically going to receive a notification saying, yeah, it's time for Alex to renew his, his, his uh, 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 certification. We will send you notifications on maintenance. I kind of skipped down a little bit because this is really exciting and important for, for our community right now. Everybody's talking about maintenance, public safety, aviation, safety. Is you can set up maintenance programs for your for your organizations. If you're trying to uh, track training and where your people are at and what they have done, uh, we have an area in here that you can again add your training and then track your people, your individuals' uh, uh, date of record that they have that they have taken their training or that they have completed their their certification. Anytime your drone gets turned on, anytime a battery is turned on, everything is recorded. Everything is recorded. And that system of record is incredibly valuable. Again, when you're talking about running a program, not a project, this is- And Koi, why, why is that? I mean, I know there's the whole, we live in a litigious society and everyone's kind of standing around the corner trying to point the finger and say, I got you. Uh, but- why is it that this is not only important from creating actionable insights, but also from like a risk management perspective for public safety officials? So nobody wants to get in trouble. There's just, I mean, pure and simple. Everybody wants to be safe. There's a reason that when I drive a fire truck on the opposite side of traffic that I have rules and I have policies and I have, I have to do things a certain way. And when I show up on scene, and I pull a hose out, I have to do that the same way. There's a policy behind that. There is a reason that we do all the things. This is from the FAA. This is from the regulators. This is from, this is behind, this is what's behind public safety aviation, public safety aviation. It's documentation, it's, it's thoroughness, it's making sure that we are doing this the right way. So if Mr. and Mrs. Smith call and they say, hey, listen, you were out flying over my backyard. I can definitively show you through the replay engine, yes, I was, or, or no, I wasn't. I can show Mr. or Mrs. Smith what exactly our program was doing to help you, our community out throughout this last year. I can quantify and qualify, and those are two really good words, quantify what our program has been doing, and I can qualify what our program has been doing to show fiscal, our fiscal responsibility. I can actually demonstrate how many hours our people have been out doing the jobs that they have been hired to do. 
quantifying, where they've been doing it at. Quantifying those taxpayer dollars and putting them to use yeah. and, and actually showing the community that we're, you're doing something. And, and when I, when, and this might be good for, for Mike as well to kind of come in is with um, just with like the perception of drones. I think there is like this idea of like big brothers watching or, or, or it's just like something for extreme sports, but um, and maybe actually, I don't know if you wanted to finish anything else here, but I, I'm kind of interested in that, like how we can continue to perceive drones as not as some like uh, Megatron, like some sort of like scary matrix type um, piece of technology, but something that is like a piece of safety that is not meant to do bad things. Granted, unfortunately, you can do bad things with drones, but what what is it the how do we break down some of the cultural mis, uh, misconceptions around drones within our daily lives? Mike, did you want to dive into that? Man, Quinn, I think you're uh, you're going to be an expert on that with what uh, you kind of went through in your your past role. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. So our our public trust trust my team, the the team that 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 I work with. The public trust us to go into your house on the worst day of your life, the worst days, the worst days of your life, and come into your home and affect change, affect positive change. If that is medically, if it's through uh, a, a, a fire situation, if it's taking care of you on the side of the road, you entrust your life with somebody like me. I, you, you, you have confidence in me because in our team, you have confidence in our team because you know that we're trained, you know that we operate by policy, we know that you're, we're accountable, that we have, you can come back at any point and ask us, and we work for you, any point, we're public safety, we're, we're, we're public servants, we're emergency responders, at any point, we are responsible to you. This should be no different. There should not, if you can trust me with coming into your house to take care of your family, then you should be able to trust us to be able to use this tool. So long as this is a program, again, a program, not a project. With rules. Have, there's rules and there's documentation. And this, this software is what provides that documentation. This program is what provides our incident commanders the information to make good decisions to take care of you on the other end of the camera and that's 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 where this is at we have to take the scary we started taking the scary out of this kevin i would say probably four years ago when you started buying drones and walgreens not uas not flying robots but we started buying drones and walgreens and now that you can go to best buy you can order these things off Amazon. <clears throat> the game is is, hey, how do we how do we how do we do this safely now? Hey, Coy, can team? you could you switch your screen back to the real time? Maybe it's kind of uh, showing. I, I think Sean, uh, Mike, is Sean still out there flying? Um, good to kind of continue to allow people who have who are coming in now yeah, just thanks, to man. sort of see this up. The back end stuff mm. is important. Risk mitigation, asset management. This is um, much more exciting. Agreed. But you seeing everyone just for your uh, fun fact, uh, you seeing Sean there in, in Mike's backyard actually flying the drone, and in the top left screen, um, which Koi, uh can can highlight just while we're talking some more Q and A. Can I? Um, can I? Uh, please. Hey, Kevin, there was something I missed here, man. That Go I, for I it. wanted to show. Is guys, um, not only are you looking at all of this, but I'm going to drop down here into the, into our feature layers that we have. Because there's a lot of information, like being able to ingest Esri, right? This is exciting. So this is just an Esri layer. This is public public layers. Everybody likes to see the GDOT cameras because this is the Georgia Department of Transportation cameras that are listed here. I just turned those on by looking at the 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 uh, eyeball, and I am going to zoom out real quick. So tell my... me what it, what is Esri? Esri is so Esri is the Amazon. <laughs> If I could use that analogy, the Amazon of, of geospatial information. It is when you're looking at these maps, when you're looking at uh, gathering information from surveys, when you're looking at um, these screens, this would be equivalent to the Amazon of that. That is a, Esri is a, 
a, an amazing organization that allows us uh, the ability to use geospatial information. And so, so you can take to... some of their data, like you said, just with like Georgia street lights, and then all of a sudden that populates into your map in, in your street cameras. And now you know where they are based on this Esri data that's already been created. And now, and so what, you're looking at this and please dive in, but what are these other kind of icons so, or geographic locations that you can plug in? So these are shots um, that are coming up from uh, cameras that are listed uh, just within uh, throughout Georgia. This is just public information that uh, we've been able to bring in uh, through Esri. And I'm trying to figure out why my screen is not larger. This is not, are you getting a full full view? Not, not a full, we can kind of see it so we get an idea. There oh, it is, that's, okay. that's bigger. Yeah, I was, that was a user error. So all the all these cameras are actually being fed into um, into in through drone sense. So it, think again, emergency operations center, and you're trying to figure out, hey, what's going on in uh, our community after the the tornado that just went through? Well, there you go. That's that's street cameras that are popped up. You can see here on my upper left, these are our operators. So if I click on myself, you can see where I'm operating at here in Texas. I'm just going to kind of zoom out. I'm going to click up to Ke Kelvin, which is in uh, Washington. I'm going to go back over to Mike Mosserino and Sean and our team there. Also, if and you see, Sean is looking at a nice little duck right now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, look there at the go. look at the resolution of that. It's a beautiful duck. <laughs> so he by by accessing these Esri layers, uh, we are able to um, pull in a lot of really great actual information again that can be used for real-time decision-making. Um, these layers that uh, you're looking at that um, Mike and the team created with the, it says victim here in the box, um, the perimeter, that is all being created underneath uh, these layers, these um, feature layers that we have that we can create. So this is, this is all what Mike is, uh, and his team has created. I mean, there's literally thousands of icons that you can, you can drop anywhere on here. I mean, as an example, I'm just going to take an animal hazard. I'm going to drop it on the screen, bam. And you just saw animal hazard listed. Now, Sean has, if I called over the radio or I sent a chat to Sean, you'd be able to say, yeah, man, I can go over to the animal hazard right now and take and get eyes on. Uh, anybody that's operating with the DroneSense platform is able to uh, see real time what is happening on the, sc the screen together. So this allows us all to be able to interoperate uh, together. There are some other features on here that are really great, like uh, being able to use measurements. I mean, you say, oh, well, that, that doesn't seem exciting. Well, I'll tell you how important it is when I need to go from this hella base here where Mike's at. I'm just going to do a measurement from the, the, uh, uh, the animal hazard to where Mike's at. I know there's 500 feet. So let's say I am going in for a law enforcement call and I need to know my ingress and egress route, how far out I have to go. That's very important. Or what if I'm a fire chief and I I have the county commissioners coming down on me and, uh-oh, I just popped out of my screen here. Um, and I need to be able to report back um, an area that was just burned. That would be very important for uh, my community or the the um, the news media that's trying to figure out what just happened with the wildfire. Well, I could just come down very quickly and map an area and say, "Hey, listen, um, commissioner or chief or news media, uh, we had an incident that was uh, that took place, and we just burned uh, just under 13 acres before we got full containment, and uh, we sent our our troops back home." So that's, that's really helpful. The last couple of things I'm gonna hit, and I, I wanna open this up to questions uh, because it is kind of nice. And I use this in the Air Operations Center, Kevin, is down here at the bottom, there are some, uh, uh, some layers that are pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to click on- Is this all, es are these, <clears throat> is this Esri data as well? This is all NOAA. So this is all based on NOAA's uh, information that they're sending out. Open source, um, so free. Can, like, open can anyone source. tap in this? That's right. And if I am 
as I am sitting in the Air Operations Center, um, trying to monitor what's happening with our uh, with our weather patterns, I now know this is going to be the path of the storm. And all I did was click on. Um, I'm going to click off so you guys can see this. What's on and off? If I want to see what fire is burning uh, just outside of Montana, North Dakota, I can click on that. I've got a, a 1600 or 622 acre uh, burn. Is it contained? Not yet. So this is information that again, real time actionable uh, for our decision makers. Quite stupid uh, question. Why does that, why does this matter? Why does that information matter to me? Why do I care about that? Yeah, so if what you are, so you as, uh, let's say you are sitting at your home and you're counting on your uh, emergency operations organizations to, to provide you the best service they can, they've got to get information. And I gather that information from this information. So I go to the weather and I look to see where the hurricane is tracking and where my drones are positioned in relationship to that. So if it's something that's tracking into Houston, I know that I'm close to Houston. I could have in, in our situations here in the state of Texas, I can actually show when we all come online where everybody in the state of Texas is located that's using drone sense, where they're at and who to task to get to that information, to, to that area quickest. And I can show, you know, what, where the fires are at, where the, 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 the storm that's coming in is, is coming from and where it's going all through these feature layers. So again, it's, the more information we have, the better decision making we can make, and that's that's just the that's the that's the name of the game. It's awesome. It's... So we're we're probably gonna end up going a little bit late here, uh, maybe. So we got nine minutes left in the hour. Maybe go five, ten, fifteen minutes over based on questions. So we got a range of uh, questions here. Mike Mike's been at answering a lot of them uh, in the chat, but good to kind of verbalize them and it can spark a discussion. Uh, so I'm just going to start firing some away and everyone in the, the chat, keep asking questions and either in the question Q and a part or the chat part. Um, and we'll just go with the most recent one and I'll work backwards. Are you able to work with any veto platforms? If so, which ones? Um, so currently we are, uh, we are working with Autel, um, on the, um, Dragonfish. And that is a, uh, a system in which we're, we're working on integration uh, with. And um, we're always looking for opportunities to, to improve our, our delivery. So if there's somebody else out there that's interested that there's a, a, a VTOL. Um, we're, we're, we want to improve, improve our product line. Yeah, and just to add to that quickly, uh, we have the ability to ingest video from just about anything. So it's a feature we didn't talk about too much uh, on this webinar, but uh, we, we have some a product called Mobile Streaming and Tracking. Uh, you can see it with my cell phone uh, in the upper left-hand corner of our video right now. That's just an iPhone running the app. Uh, we have uh, the ability to, uh, to get the location of that and the video. And what's unique about that is with Android devices, we can ingest HDMI in. So any drones that might not have the functionality and some of the automation um, that we have with our partners, at the very least, we're able to take that video. Uh, ingest that and then show location of that uh, drone operator. So, you know, that's some of the work we're doing with some of the indoor drones. Uh, that's some of the work that we're doing with some of the, the VTOL and hybrid systems out there as well. And if you're, if you're looking at ground robots, we tie direct to Mike's point, we tie directly into a ground robot with HDMI. We also tie directly in with manned aircraft. So the entire state of Texas, all of our DPS aircraft, uh, Department of Public Safety, we, we have drone sense tied into them. So we see the manned aircraft coming in with the drones and we all ember operate together. Through I, think, I think described. drone sense needs to change their name from drone sense to, to video sense. <laughs> That's the thing is that you don't have to be a drone. I mean, it can be on the ground. It could be a land That's robot. Right. It could be fixed wing. It, could be anything. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just like a streaming a video via LTE or Wi-Fi or some sort of mechanism and pull You're it together right. to create this operational picture. You're absolutely right. That's cool. All right, let's keep fi rapid fire here. So more questions, let's get it going. Uh, you may have already addressed this from Kelly. Um, any icons for fuel projects, treated and untreated, for example? 
icons for treated and untreated. Maybe or, like when you were like on the map of, I, I guess just quick of from the Esri data or the NOAA data where they're just like, maybe that'd be like fuel gas stations or fuel refineries maybe of just like risk. Oh, sure. Yeah. So uh, Kelly, if that- Mitigation if, project icons is- Mitigation project icons. You know, off the top of my head, I God, there's so many different layers here. I mean, different um, uh, icons. Man, I don't even know where to start on what that would look like. Uh, Long story short, so there's there's a lot of options there, and you can refine it based on whatever your local geographic needs are. Is what I'm taking. Yeah, here's your infrastructure. I'm gonna just go off of that. <laughs> I'm gonna That's just good. scroll through that, Kelly. So there's a lot of here that, that might fit. Fit your Ooh, your diesel diesel plant. Yep, exactly. And is this Esri Noah data, or what, like where is this data coming from? This uh this information has all been um, populated through DroneSense. Um, so this is this is what we have internal to DroneSense. These are uh, icons that are internationally recognized, but they're just pulled in uh, into our system, and we use them. To again, for situational awareness. So I could um, maybe to Kelly's point is say, hey, uh, I have an ethanol plant. I need to drop an icon here. Uh, yep. This is all within our system. That's cool. All right, keep wrapping the fire here. Uh, Charles Warner, he had a couple of questions, but one that I think uh, speaks, uh, just kind of creates discussion here is, uh, how does DroneSense work to help coordinate during large disasters and major incidents? You kind of alluded to this, Coy, but maybe like speak to that for like a, wide scale multi-department response to a hurricane or towards a mass shooting with multiple departments coming in. How does that tie in and help and work? So number one, and, and this goes back to Chief Werner, number one is knowing who's on the team. You got to know who's on the team. And that's what drone responders has been working really hard at doing is trying to determine who is on the team. And once you get the team, you got to know who to play, who what your plays are and what organ what equipment you're using. And then once you have that, you show up on this board and you actually begin operating together. So uh, for the, it is an example for the state of Texas, um, we have the, the, a very, very large group of organizations within the state of Texas that are DroneSense customers. So whenever we show up, we are able to uh, share our mission codes and we all operate together as a, as a team. Um, it pulls us all together. Step one, though, you got to know who's on the team. And Chief Werner, I really appreciate what Drone Responders has been doing to try to, to, to pull our teams together. Good stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, I just kind of continue to wrap the fire here, everyone. We're gonna, uh, this is for you. Uh, not for me, not for Quaid, not for Mike. It's for you. Um, Jose, good afternoon from Spain, Europe. I think most of us should know Spain's in Europe. First of all, I congratulate you. Thank you. Uh, question is, how does the video work in Europe regarding the signal delay? So uh, <clears throat> we had a uh, somebody, one of our team members just take a trip uh, and was in Paris, France. And uh, we were having a fly day and uh, we, were, <laughs> we were live streaming from Paris, France to uh, we had Texas, we had Washington, we had Georgia, we had Illinois. Uh, it, it's cellu this is cellular based, is what you're looking at today is cellular based. Um, but there, is, there, there is a future in having on-prem solutions. So making servers that are not, that will only work in, in certain geographical areas. And uh, that, that is something that you should be looking forward to, but I can tell you from experience from our own teammate in France, um, it, it's, I mean, it, it's cellular. So if you're face, if you can FaceTime, if you're able to, to Zoom, then you can use DroneSense. Good to know. Uh, right, so there was a question from Peter on, this might be more of a very specific question and you probably get offline with Mike, um, but I'll read through it and maybe I don't wanna spend too much time on it, but just read through it. Uh, Radio Mobile provides mobile data computers, MDC, and the AVL software on it for fire departments such as CAL FIRE. We provide mapping, map layers, and navigation. How can we get a video feed in the drone location on our system? If I have an AVL location, I can put an icon on the screen, and when the firefighter and the fire engine or the incident commander selects it on the MDC, or even the dispatcher in the ECC, we could bring up the video associated yeah, with Yeah, Kevin, 
uh, we can, uh, and, and Peter, thanks for that. Um, I'm dropping my email in the chat right now. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about your product. Good deal. Uh, thanks, Peter, for the question and Mike for that. Um, Kelly, thanks for firing off another question. Um, it does seem, as I mentioned, from drone sense to maybe evolving your name to video sense, who knows? Um, there was a question from Kelly about any other partnerships with any other fire software. I know we've seen some other incident command softwares like First Do. Um, how is Drone Sense integrating into other softwares? Is there like the whole idea of a open APIs? I mean, you plugging in or others plugging into you. Um, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, I can. I can touch on that quickly. So you know, we 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 deal with partnerships on a case by case basis. You know, especially there's 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 a lot of them out there uh, in the public safety space with various uh, agencies. So we have uh, you know ramped up our product team. Uh, one thing is we're always listening for feedback and looking way uh, for ways to integrate. Um, we don't have an open API per se, uh, but you know approach us, come, uh, come to us with, with different solutions and different tie-ins. Uh, we can kind of have those conversations as they come up. Coit, anything to add there? Okay. Well, it's top of the hour. And uh, again, I want to challenge everyone. Any of your final questions? Uh, we got a couple more minutes here. Um, but what I would like to circle up and round up here is just kind of like a, a final thought and final question um, from both you, Coit, and Mike, and I'll give something too. Um, but Coit, as we've been talking about this, and you have experience in public safety and now are on the industry side, uh, working with a company like Drone Sense, Darley, um, what would you say to those first responders that are thinking about a drone program or, or maybe have been naysayers about it? Um, like, what would your message be to someone that has been reluctant to? realize that this is something that's here to stay and, and, and how this can be something that could really be a force multiplier for them. Like what would be some final messages you would say to them? Number one, join a team. You're already on a team just by the nature of what you do. Um, we, we all get that, but join a team, be, be on a team. Don't recreate this. There are organizations that are representative here. I mentioned the drone responders several times. There are organizations that are geared towards pulling us all together. If I know you, you know me, then this, this all happens a lot faster. We share policies and procedure. We share training. We develop programs, not projects. We develop programs, but we have to be on the same team together. Don't reinvent the wheel and don't be afraid of this. This is, this is here to stay. It's only going to get, it's going to go faster. It's getting faster and faster every day be on the team. And I, I, I hope that um, through, through great webinars like this and our, our wonderful partnerships uh, with, with Darley and our, our, other, our other partners out there that we can, we can just evangelize that word is team. We have to be able to show up on a team, know who's on it and how we're all gonna operate. Otherwise, it's, it's just not reasonable to think that we can, we can use these tools effectively. You've got to use them. You got to coordinate them just the same way we do everything else on the job. So be on the team. Love it. Mike, any other final thoughts, comments, uh, mic drops, uh, challenges uh, that you want to give it, give to everyone that's still here? No, it's, uh, you know, it seems like this was positive. We still have a lot of people sticking around past uh, noon on a holiday week. Uh, so we really appreciate the time, uh, support, uh, any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, sales at DroneSense is a lot easier than my first and last name. Uh, so sales at DroneSense.com uh, will get you into my inbox. So feel free to reach out with any questions or anything we can do to support you and your agency. Thanks, Mike. And I guess just to, to round it out, I, just, I just want to say thank you to everyone for giving us a, a little bit over an hour of your time to, to see this new technology in the works. We wanted to not do death by PowerPoint and go straight into demo. So we hope to do more of this. Um, if you've got ideas, questions for future webinars, for future podcasts, let me know. Uh, you can message me at kevinsolfan at darla.com. I also have all your emails from signing up. So I'll send you a note as well. Um, but again, the yes, the recording will be sent out, Kelly. But my big takeaway from this is that project versus, or, uh, what was it? Project versus program. That was my thing that you said, Coit, that I took away of. 
it, while you can have good intentions, you need to surround yourself with a, a team. It's okay to be a piece of the puzzle. You can't do it all yourself. So reach out to, to Coit, reach out to Mike, reach out to myself. Some of you saw Sean and Nick and Moomin in the field. We got people here to help you un make sense of all things drones. It's a lot, um, but there's plenty of drone webinars and podcasts to listen to. So um, again, thank you all very much for coming here. We'll send out a recording and I wish you all a very safe, healthy and happy holiday season. And uh, until next time, take care. Thanks guys. See you everyone.